Good evening. This is Wednesday, May 21st, 167 days until the 2008 presidential election. As John Brown led the raid at Harper's Ferry, as Elizabeth Cady Stanton read the Declaration of Sentiments at Seneca Falls, as Martin Luther King led marchers to the county courthouse in Selma, so too, in our fifth story on the countdown, did Hillary Rodham Clinton today rally to the cause of the 10,000 elderly residents of Century Village in Boca Raton, Florida. Hey, all that is Senator Clinton's analogy, not mine. The New York Democrat today comparing her effort to seek the delegations from Florida and Michigan to the struggle to free the slaves and the suffragist movement and the civil rights movement. And no, I am not kidding. I believe that both Senator Obama and myself have an obligation as potential Democratic nominees. In fact, we all have an obligation as Democrats to carry on this legacy and ensure that in our nominating process, every voice is heard and every single vote is counted. Senator Clinton then drawing a line from Century Village, where on Election Day 2000, those pesky butterfly ballots proved to be the most confusing, directly to Denver. The lesson of 2000 here in Florida is crystal clear. If any votes aren't counted, the will of the people isn't realized, and our democracy is diminished. That's what I've always believed. Except when she hasn't. In order to compete in Iowa and New Hampshire, if you can remember all the way back to Iowa and New Hampshire, each of the Democratic candidates, including Senator Clinton, having pledged not to campaign in Florida where the votes would not count because that state jumped ahead on the schedule of caucuses and primaries as set down by the Democratic National Committee. That pledge conveniently long since forgotten. Senator Obama saying this afternoon near Orlando that he hopes that an agreement to seek the Florida delegation will be reached in a few weeks' time. For a crowd of 20,000 in Tampa this afternoon, the Illinois Democrat attacking Senator McCain, praising Senator Clinton. Senator Clinton has run an outstanding campaign, and she deserves our admiration and our respect because she has set the standard. She has broken through barriers and will open up opportunity for a lot of people, including my two young daughters. Today's superdelegate grudge match update then. Obama, two. Clinton, one, making the superdelegate tally. Obama, 306 and a half. Clinton, 281 and a half. And in the wake of last night's primaries, pledge delegates now 1645 to 1502. And in the 10, Edwards pledge delegates that have switched to Obama. And in delegates overall, Obama, 1961 and a half. Clinton, 1783 and a half. He was born in 1961 and a half. Time now to bring in our own Richard Wolf, senior White House correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Richard, good evening. Good evening, Keith. So this is a, a civil rights issue. This is on the level of the abolitionists. It's reminiscent of the suppression of the vote in Zimbabwe, she said. One assumes then that if Obama were trailing in the delegate count and he had won Florida, Senator Clinton would have made these same comments, this same speech today, insisting that his votes should be counted, correct? Yes, you know, I, I never realized quite how noble a crusade this was to seat the Florida delegation um, until I heard the speech. And, and I have to say, I thought until now it was just about people wanting to win the nomination. But now that I know that this has a higher purpose, I've got to go back to read Terry McCullough's book, uh, What a Party, I'm sure you've read it, um, <laughs> a, a, in which he recounts a conversation in 2004. He was then head of the DNC, and Michigan also wanted to bump its primary up early. Uh, he had this conversation with Carl Levin where he said, if you go ahead and do this, you'll collapse the system, and the closest you'll get to the uh, convention will be to watch it on TV. So McAuliffe, I'm afraid, obviously now running the Clinton campaign, is going to have to be added to that list of great disenfranchisers like the Supreme Court in 2000. Well, as uh, Senator Clinton said on this, on this newscast, uh, she believes in deathbed conversions. Uh, Chuck Todd explained last night that Senator Obama had pulled far enough ahead in, in delegates that the Florida and Michigan delegations could indeed be seated in full and it would not ultimately affect the outcome of the nomination. The question then becomes, is it time to call her bluff and is the venue for that this uh, Democratic Committee meeting on May 31st in D.C.? Well, let's be clear here. The, the Obama campaign has played it hardball so far. Uh, they've said they only want a 50-50 split and then it was pretty recent that they've tried to be more generous and said, look, we'll negotiate about this. 
Having said that, look, uh, Senator Obama is being more magnanimous now. He's being more gracious in his comments, but he's not that generous of spirit. His lead is real, but it's not that big that he's willing to give them everything. So um, I don't think that's going to happen, but clearly they're in a mood to negotiate. Uh, what's interesting is that the Clinton campaign has actually hardened its position. But what is, um, what is its position? What is she doing at this point? What is her end game now after she did not achieve what, what most people thought was necessary, um, an upset in a huge pro-Obama state like, say, Oregon last night? Well, I think this speech is a very unsubtle way to put pressure on the Rules Committee, the DNC Rules Committee, which meets at the end of this month. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the question is, will it backfire? Is this kind of tactic? When Donna Brazil, for instance, hears that she is disenfranchising people, someone who spent her mm. life getting people to vote <laughs> and registering voters, uh, what will those members of the DNC think about all of this? Uh, so I, I, it's, it's hardball. It's not very subtle, but uh, I, I guess it's, it's the last tactic they've got to try and get the best deal they can out of this committee. All right, that's two hardball references. You're over your quota for the week. But uh, uh, last question. <laughs> it, you said they're hardening, the Clinton camp is hardening their stance. What does that mean in terms of when this ends? Because it is going to end, and it, it is going to end in Senator Obama's favor. What does this mean in terms of what stops the Clinton campaign? Is it when uh, reporters say, no more story here, we're going home? I think they've been pretty explicit. They say uh, repeatedly, whether it's Senator Clinton or uh, Howard Wilson, if the Obama folks want to beat us, then they go, should go ahead and beat them. They are waiting to see Obama reach that magic number, however you count that. <laughs> Which was and, that? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a number. Whatever it is, it's a number. And when they reach that number, I suspect they're actually not going to say, we concede. They'll say, we suspend. And by the way, we've won the popular vote, and we're really the winners here, except for everything else that's going to happen at the convention. Richard Wolf of MSNBC and Newsweek. As always, sir, great thanks. Thank you, Keith. In the